Welcome back. Thanks for joining me for a, another crafting chat video. My name's Lorraine and I'm coming to you from the UK. This is the LNS Crafts channel where I talk about my crafting endeavours. So those are usually knitting, crocheting, sometimes a bit of sewing, a little bit of diamond painting, some, some cross stitching, whatever takes my fancy at the time, whatever I'm into craft wise at the time, I will share it on this channel so if you're into that then do continue to watch the video um, if you're new welcome feel free to engage and um, have participate in the comments section below the video we like to discuss what I've been working on pass along tips that sort of thing if you like to do that then feel free in the comments section below the video in the meantime, I have quite a lot to show you. I have some knitting, some crocheting, I have a cross some cross stitching, I have a diamond painting, and I have a little bit of long stitching. So let's jump straight into finished objects, shall we? So the first thing I have to share with you is knitting. So, last time round I was working on a pair of gloves and I was using, um, I'll put a picture up here if I can, and I was using some mohair yarn mixed with um, some nylon and acrylic, I think it is, yarn by Stylecraft, and I created a pair of gloves but the thumb was feeling a bit skew if so I decided to frog that and have a go at just making some mittens instead. <laughs> Um, I will get back to having a go at some gloves because I really do want to make some gloves but just for this occasion I frogged that project and now I have some mittens. So these are the mittens, the mohair mixed with, um, so it's one strand of mohair mixed with a strand of um, nylon and acrylic I think it is, Stylecraft yarn it was in the colour raspberry and that's what I came up with. So just a basic glove pattern so what I did I think I can't remember what size needles I use I think 3.25 millimeters no 2.75 millimeter needles I used so I've done a 2 by 2 ribbed cuff um, thumb gusset has about 17 18 stitches on it I think and then I have just for the top I've just decreased in the round and um, passed the pass the, the yarn through the last few stitches to close so there's nothing difficult in this at all it's just just knitting um, increasing and decreasing and ribbing that's it stocking stitch in the round and I have a pair of mittens so yeah these are child size they fit a lot better than the, the gloves did um, I got them I made them to my daughter's hand size so they fit her better than they fit me but I'm pleased with how they turned out and I will I probably will make some more but I do definitely want to get back to having another go at making some gloves that actually fit my hands properly um, but that is what happened to the gloves they didn't turn into gloves I got second glove syndrome and turned them into mittens so that's that I also had a go at some long stitching last time around I showed um, in my incoming section this anchor first stitch kit that I bought I think on Amazon um, it's a very it's a, it's a beginner kit for long stitching and but I just thought let me have a go see if I like it rather than commit myself to a bigger project and I have now done that it's on the canvas and it's using yarn so I enjoyed doing this it took a little while maybe an hour or so um, what I noticed is I've forgotten to put the eye in so I still need to finish that off properly um, but yeah the canvas is quite stiff like a it's like a tapestry really but the design is actually printed on the canvas so you just literally go over the design and then it's just the stitching that is different to um, tapestry um, so it's very similar to to my mind it's very similar to the tapestry that I've been working with the flamingos and the bumblebee um, by Bothy but this time I'm using long stitches to um, create the design rather than cross stitches or tent stitch so that's the only difference for me. I do think that I'd like to have a go at doing 
long stitching using silky threads rather than wool or yarn so um, I have been looking at purchasing a long stitch kit from Bothy but I haven't committed to it yet because I'm not quite sure what design I want to do so watch this space but I do think I'm going to have a go at doing a, a proper long stitch kit using threads rather than the yarn but this is what it looks like this little pack came with the cardboard um, mount so it's got the mount there and the little backing and then you should <coughs> excuse me you should be able to just hang it using this little hanger thing um not not really sure what i intend to do with it because i just wanted to this is just kind of like a little trial piece so i'm not sure what, what i'm going to do with this i may try and stitch something with it i don't know but it's finished i just need to put the eye in i thought i'd finished it um but clearly i need to put the eye in so that's that one then <clears throat> excuse me i don't know why my voice is going a bit funny now um last video i showed you a pair of half done socks i think i'd literally done the, the, the cuffs and that was it these are scrappy socks i've used a mixture of yarns from um, hand dyed yarns from different sellers so i think i have hedgerow yarns here these two colors i think i've got back to blighty um this one and i've got giddy yarns here and there and I think possibly the pink and the purple is actually craft house magic yarn but these are vanilla socks so my vanilla sock recipe is done on a 2.25 millimeter needle which is a US one and I usually do a two inch ribbed cuff which is two by two but in this case I've done a shorter ribbed cuff because I didn't have enough of this yarn um, and then I knit straight to the foot to the to the heel I do a heel flap and gusset style sock and then I knit down to the toe and I do a rounded toe so that's my rounded toe decrease and that's all I did nothing different here except that they were mini skeins and they're good to go so these are smaller than um, my foot size so because I was just using scrappy yarns and so I can't try these I don't really want to stretch them out on my blockers but that's what they look like they are finished and they are ready to be gifted so that's one pair of socks off the needles um, and that is all my finished objects I haven't really finished very much I've got quite a few whips that I have started that I've been working on so let's move into the works in progress section So I'm going to start with my knitted and crocheted whips because um, I have a few here. I also have a diamond painting. So let's see. With the knitting and crocheting, which one should I start with? Um, I'll start with the crochet. So I posted some pictures on my Instagram account of my latest crochet project. Um, I seem to have family members that are having babies. <laughs> Uh, or that are announcing having babies so I've got it in my mind that I want to do a baby blanket and I wanted to do a crochet baby blanket because crochet is a lot faster for me um, but I wanted to do something different to what I'd done before and I was looking through some of the magazines that I have stashed away and I thought I have this Scandi throw this is it's quite big because it's a throw but I want to make I decided I wanted to make this in a baby blanket size so I've done my um, calculations and I have um, chained a number of stitches to the size that I thought I wanted for the baby blanket and I've been having a go and um, that's the the kind of pattern I've shown it on my Instagram account I really like the idea that it's color work and it's pretty I didn't want to do these colors because this is going to be for a baby girl so it's trigonometry and it's called the Scandi throw basically and I can't I don't know if it says who the designer is on this I've I've just actually yeah Esme Crick it's on Ravelry as well I'll link the pattern in the description box um, below the video. If there are, if I mention any patterns or any shops and stuff like that, then they will be in the description box below the video. I also have timestamps down below as well, so you can jump from one section to another. So have a look down there. Um, if you, if there's anything down there that doesn't answer the question that you have in your mind, then please feel free to um, ask me the question via the comment section. So yeah, so that's it, and 
I decided to use, I think I'm using a five, I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, just an ordinary metal hook because I like these. They they feel really nice when I'm crocheting. Um, and I'm using Stylecraft uh, special yarns. So I've got white and I've got one, two, three, four different tones of pink. So I've got the shade fondant, which is this colour. I'm going to have to do them one by one. I've got what's this one? Let's say clematis. So these are the pinks. <coughs> Sorry, fondant clematis. This one is powder pink, and then I have soft peach so these are the colors i'm working with in the blanket and they're all style craft special um double knit weight yarn and then the white and this is how far i have got i showed it on my instagram so if you've seen that you've seen it already i haven't really done any more than that but this is how far i've got and i'm really enjoying the way it's working up so that's my blanket so it will be it looks a bit small, but I think once it's blocked, if I block it and once the border's on, it should be um, a decent enough size for a, a cot blanket or a, a pushchair or stroller blanket. Um, but yeah, I really like the way it's working up. I did have a little bit of trouble initially um, understanding the pattern because the pattern is, in the first instance, it's written out and then it's charted. Then it becomes a chart and it's um i can't show you the chart but it's a it's a it's a color chart so i was really confused but i sat down and i was determined to to understand this and have a really good go at this and because i've never done proper color work um throughout crocheting projects or i've not done big crocheting projects with color work so this is like my first real proper Colour work project using crochet, and what have I, I feel like I've got a red mark here. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what it looks like on the front. So it's you can see the design there, the kind of like the the trees, but it also looks like diamonds. I think that looks really pretty, and I've used three different colours there. I think the border is going to be. I'm not quite sure what colour to make the border. Maybe the darkest colour. I think the darkest colour is the one that is meant to be used as the border yeah the darkest color is the color that's meant to be used as the border but i'll have a play around with the colors and see what i like and um yeah that's what the back looks like and i think the back is quite pretty as well look at that yeah i'm really pleased with how it's working i do find that because of the complexity of the pattern it's complex for me because i'm not um i'm kind of what's the word I haven't been crocheting for very long I'm not a beginner crocheter now I'm a, a little bit more advanced but I do find some things slightly tricky so to do the um, these bits of the pattern here for example first of all I started off um, and I was um, what's the word I was going through the back loop and I wasn't doing it the right way I can't explain it but it wasn't going I wasn't doing it the right way so for one row here you can see the loops this this these connectors here are slightly different to these because I remembered that I'm supposed to be doing it like this and not like this so that's the one instance out of many but that's the one visible mistake I can see that I've made um, because I'd put it down at that point and then I came back to it and I'd forgotten what I'd, how I'd done that stitch um, but now I think I've got the hang of it I've got the hang of the pattern I still have to read the pattern and can't the chart I can't just do it off memory but I'm enjoying that it's, it's one of those projects where I have to have the time to crochet and think and read the chart and and do the you know I have to think it's a thinking project for me it's not one that I can just sit there and just do in front of the TV I can't just generally do that with crocheting anyway I have to look at my work but with this one I have to look at my work and I also have to um, keep referring to the chart make sure I'm doing it right count things so there's a little bit more involved with this project but I'm enjoying it 
because it is a bit of a challenge to me and I like the way it's working up so I'm really pleased with the way that one's turning out. So that's the crochet. Then I have some knitting. I have managed to get my sock knitting mojo back. So I started these socks. Um, I usually knit my socks tandem, not like this on these. I'm just holding them on this needle. But I tend to knit them in tandem on 9 inch circular needles, 2.25 millimeters, a size one. And I started these because I had a lot of leftover yarn, leftover mini skeins again. So, well, not leftovers, but I had mini skeins I wanted to use up. So, I decided to have a go at doing a twisted rib cuff. <laughs> First of all, you can see there, I started it normally, and then I thought, let me do some twisted ribs. So, I've done that. On the second one, it looks better because I've done it from the beginning. Um, so, it's going to be a plain vanilla sock. And then um, I'm trying to decide what to do about the heels, what colour because I got this far and then I got down to that was more or less the majority of the yarn I have this one um, but that was basically all the little blobs of yarn that I have I have been doing how many stripes is it five stripes five row stripes for these socks and so each colour is five rows in stockinette stitch. And um, and that was working fine until I got down to having balls like this size. These are really tiny um, and so I'm not going to get five rows out of these. So then I sat down and I thought, hmm, now what do I do? And since then I've just literally put them on hold trying to decide what to do because I'm thinking I could do the heel flap gusset and then the foot in the pink but will that look right with these colours I'm not sure if these colours would look good um, with a pink foot I just don't know what colours to use for the foot so the yarns I have are Craft House Magic yarns the green Giddy yarns the brown this one is a um, I think it's a West Yorkshire spinner yarn, the grey. Then I have Back to Blighty yarns here. And um, what's the last one? I think probably a little bit of leftover giddy yarns for the last one that I've done there. Um, but yeah, I'm at standstill with these. I don't quite know what colour to do the foot and the heel. Do I do the heel and flap um, in the pink and then find some other scrappy yarns to continue the rest of the foot? Um, I think when I first started doing these I was going to just do a foot tube and, and then cut in the heel afterwards. But then I started to think, mm, I'm not sure if I want to do that. But then, I don't know. I'm at a standstill with these. I don't know what to do. I'm thinking that it would just be a good idea to just use up some yarn, put these on hold for the time being, and when I get some more scraps of yarn, then I just add them in and make sock tubes. And that, uh, I think, is where I kind of got to in my thinking. I'll just leave these here for now, put them on hold, and as and when I get some more decent sized scraps of yarn, not like tiny balls like this, um, if I get some more mini skeins then I can just finish these off and make them completely stripy odd socks and possibly cut in the heel with the pink and the toe with the pink and then I don't know but these are on hold that's how far I got because then I started seeing pictures on Instagram of the new West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas yarn and I got sucked in I went down that rabbit hole Yes, I did. I went down that rabbit hole and I decided to cave in and I bought some sock yarn, like I need more sock yarn. So that was that. So I got started just yesterday. The sock yarn arrived, when did it arrive? Not yesterday, the day before. I saw um, on Tina's channel, Simply in Stitches, she's actually come back guys, she's starting to knit again, so do check out her channel. Um, Simply in Stitches, she had shown on her Instagram page some yarn that she bought from West Yorkshire Spinners, which is, we've got a spare ball, 
this beautiful silent light colourway and it's sparkly and I could not resist you guys know I love blue yarn and this was just like oh, I couldn't I just couldn't pass this one up look at the sparkle on that that is just so stunning and I thought this would make some really really nice Christmas socks or as I mentioned earlier some really nice gloves so that's the plan so I've started um, I've separated my ball into two balls of yarn and I started to knit some socks so as I do I've done them in tandem and I've got this far on one um, I just I've done the cuff so this is two by two rib cuff and I've done I think 15 rows here because I'm making these shorty socks with a heel flap and gusset and I've literally just done the heel flap gusset and then I'm going to do it on the second sock and I've done the cuff there and I've started the heel flap but I need to I'm I did it all on my nine inch circulars and I'm used to doing the heel flap and gusset shaping on um, DPN's double pointed needles but I didn't have them to hand and I wasn't going to run upstairs and go and get them so I lazily just decided to continue doing the heel flap on the nine inch circulars and I was surprised how well I did because that's what I did with these but then I got to a point last night where I was just like oh, I can't do it anymore I need to do these on my um, double pointed needles it's much more comfortable so I stopped and it was getting dark as well and because this yarn is quite a dark yarn it's quite difficult to see the stitches in the evening so now that it's getting dark early so um, I kind of gave up put that down and it's just waiting for me to come back to it but I've done that was all done in one day I had a day off so that was all done in one day and it won't be long before I finish these and I can get to move on to try the gloves again so I'm excited about that these are housed in my knitting teaspoon bag by the lovely Lisbeth so that's those also more knitting I am Whilst doing these um, socks, the scrappy socks, the ones that are on hold, I thought I had a brainwave and I saw, where did I see it? I can't remember where I saw it. I think maybe Ali, because I know Ali from Little Drops of Wonderful has done one of these hats. I, I decided that perhaps instead of doing socks um, and scrappy socks with my mini skeins, I should have a go at the full of minis hat by um, Barbara she has a podcast it's the knitting I love podcast it will show you there that's the hat it's full of minis that's what it's called full of minis and so I thought of, let me have a go at that it's been in my queue on Ravelry for a while and I finally just purchased the pattern and decided to make a start on it so I've got this far and um, my I, I think I started on size three millimeter needles and then for the kind of for the first part and then you're supposed to go up to the larger needle size according to your gauge and I've gone up to 3.5 millimeter needles but I'm having to do it magic loop because I don't have um, a 16 inch 3.5 millimeter needle and I don't like working magic loop because I get the difference when I'm doing when it goes here it, my stitches are loose you can see here you can start to see where it's all loose and I don't like that so um, I've ordered a pair of chow goose 3.5 millimeter 16 inch needles and I'm just waiting for those to arrive so I can swap them out and get back to this so I'm just doing loads of random mini skeins these are it's literally layers of yarn it looks very cozy very snug and thick so this should be really really warm for winter and um, yeah I'm really loving the way it's working out it's a joy to knit but the only thing I'm finding difficult is when I have to pick up stitches um, and picking up stitches for this is quite tricky in the dark so I have to try and knit this when I have some good daylight hours where I can see the colours and see the differences and I can see properly to pick up stitches I can't give away too much because it's a paid for pattern but that's that's the, the gist of it so I have all of these um, balls of yarn that were mini skeins so I have back to blighty yarns the bright ones are back to blighty this one is craft house magic um, <clears throat> and then I have what are these ones I think that's craft house magic as well and this one is hedgerow yarns um, 
and or is it giddy yarns it looks like i've got a giddy yarns one in there oh it's a mixture it's not hedro yarns it's giddy yarns or is that one hedro i can't even remember now i think this one is i think this one is a giddy yarn these are actually a mixture of giddy yarns and back to blighty yarns the back to blighty ones have a particular really um spring like smell to them i don't know what what she washes her yarn in but they smell so nice so that's why i'm sniffing them um but yeah i've got a mixture of back to blighty giddy yarns and um craft house magic and that is my full of minis hat that's where i'm at by the time um i do my next video i think this should be finished um so it's just one color for each kind of stripe and i'm really enjoying that very easy pattern just that I need to be doing that in with good lighting so I can see my stitches properly and definitely would recommend it if you have mini scraps of yarn they don't have to be in like lots of bright bold colors you can do it all in one color so um, if you're not someone that likes a lot of color you can just have one ball of yarn and just do just follow the pattern according to to the yeah just follow the pattern and do it in your one color yarn hat it, and it would still be just as good so I do actually plan to make a plain coloured one and, and not so varied in colour um, hat like this um, because I think I would like that for myself but yeah for now I'm just doing the mini skeins and that is actually in one of these bags you wouldn't believe I've got a number of project bags and then I end up putting them in ziplock bags I mean I don't know so those are the knitting content I now move on to diamond painting and after that some cross stitching let me move this out of the way so I have been working on this diamond painting project and I have I started it I got it on where did I get it I think I bought it on Amazon I like the words um, in this diamond painting and I started it I don't know probably two three months ago I still haven't finished it I think for some reason maybe because of the colors because it's not like exciting color wise but I haven't done loads well I've done me and my daughter have done loads of work on it but we've kind of come to a really slow period where we just don't feel like doing it I want it to be finished but I just like oh you know just the thought of sitting down and just doing the same thing over and over again in the same color because there's a lot of the same color let me show you what I mean so this is the diamond painting that I'm currently working on and it's 40 by 40 centimeters it's using round drills and um, I like the wording the like I said um, the only issue that I'm having I think the reason why I'm going so slowly on this one or why my daughter and I are going so slowly on this is because of the colors because it's not got really bright bold colors that make it fun to just dip in and out and it makes it interesting as you're going along I think because this section all of this section is going to be the same color sorry for the glare all of this section here the background is the same color it gets a bit like uh, a bit moorish and so we don't do like long snippets of time on it we do little snaps and then stop and this is how far I've got to so we just have this top section to do we've done I've done is in heaven here the wording there but all of the other bits need to be filled in and then it's done but we just can't seem to get into gear to finish it for some reason um, but that's what it's going to look like when it's done this came from I think it was Amazon yeah I think it was one that I bought on Amazon I can't remember because I don't have the box but I like the wording so I thought I'd pick it up and that's it and it's done it's um round drills and <clears throat> that's where we are with the diamond painting so now brace yourself cross stitching so as you know I've been working on I've been getting really getting into my cross stitching and I have been working on um, a, a couple of different ones last time round I explained that I'm trying to get my fit my Christmas projects finished up and so I've been working on let me 
by the packet this dimensions stocking it's the holiday hooties this is the one I'm working on hopefully you can see that let's put it there that's it holiday hooties I have I think last time I'd only done this one I'm now done all of the birds and I'm nearly nearly finished and I wanted to get it finished today but I really wanted to to do a video to show you guys where I got up to so <coughs> excuse me I have to take it off I should have prepared myself a bit better for this I didn't take it off the off of the stand it's on the lap stand just bear with me so this is where I am up to with this so this is on a 14 count Ada it's the dimensions kit holiday hooties it's a um, two over one stranded project with full crosses. There are no half crosses on this and a bit of backstitch. So it's full cross and a little bit of backstitching to define the characters, the birds. So this is where I've got to. So I've done the bit where you, um, this is the bit where you put the name and I haven't decided who it's for yet so I haven't put that in. Um, let's bring it closer so you can see there are some snowflakes on there. You can see the white there. So I've done each bird. I've done this bird and done all the black lining on this one, back stitching. I've done this bird and done some of the back stitching. I need to complete the back stitching for the bottom half. And oh no, I did finish it. I thought I hadn't. I finished it. Yeah, I've done the back stitching on this one as well and the branches. So I just need to do the back stitching on this one. And then um, I've got the branch is to go this way. There's a little bit more of the branch this way and a little bit more that way. And then it's done. That's all it is to finish this one. So you can see that's what it looks like now. I really like the way that they combine threads to make the colours look um, really, really bold and um, kind of dimensional, I guess. So, yeah, I'm really, I really like it. I like the way it looks. It is a, a little bit more of an intricate stitch for me because... I don't, um, I haven't, this is the first time I've combined threads, for one. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, and I've enjoyed, I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it. I like the colours, the colours make this one fun, and I'm really enjoying this one. I just want to get it finished, so that I can get it um, cut and made into a stocking. Because I watched a video by a Little Work, Little Little Yellow Workhouse or something like that. I can't remember the name of the podcast. I'll put it in the on the screen. And she does her... I watched how she backs her Christmas stockings. She's done quite a few Christmas stockings. And she uses a quilt backing. And I wanted to have a go at that. Um, instead of using the felt that it comes with. It comes with this red felt. And you're supposed to just put that on the back. And that's the back of your stocking. Um, but she does hers with a lovely quilted fabric chooses her fabric quilts it attaches it all to the back and she makes it look really classy and I really wanted to have a go at that so um, I'm excited to get this finished so I can actually have a go at that so that is my holiday hooties next time you see this hopefully it will be a finished stocking so that's that one I've also been working on let's see I have been working a little bit on the um, seahorses the bothy threads kit so this one hasn't been out in a while because I put it down in favour of my Christmas stitching but since I'm near, near the end of that one I, and I had a few days off work I decided to have a go um, just to have a, a little bit of fun with my Shall We Dance by Bothy Threads so this is the seahorse Shall We Dance cross stitch kit that I bought from Bothy Threads it's um, you get the fabric and the threads and everything in the kit it's done on a 14 count ada and it's a two two strands over one thread project and it's a full cross stitch there's no half crosses on this so this is where i've got to um i'm not sure where i was last time when i showed this um, project but i'll insert hopefully i've inserted a picture but i've managed to complete the fin this time and I'm pleased with that. I need to just do the tail and then the one, this one is done. So that's what it will look like. Oopsie. There you go. So it's just the tail that needs to be completed down here. And then seahorse number one is done. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I really love the colours in this. I'm trying to squeeze this on. The colours in this are fabulous. Look at that. 
the detail it makes my stitching look so good the fabric is already um, got these little patterns on it this is how the fabric comes so it's perfect for this project I love the way that the colors combine as I said I find it difficult when I get started on this to put it down because I really want to continue when one color finishes it moves on to the next color and it just goes on and on and it just makes it really hard to put down it's a really enjoyable stitch so that's where I am with this one um, once I finish my Christmas project I'll probably get onto this one and make a bit more um, progress on this one and try and get this finished but I actually do have another Christmas stocking that I ordered so we shall see we shall see what happens um, so that's that project then I also have as you remember I've been working on the Heaven and Earth Designs um, project which is Life is an Open Book that's what it looks like when it's done um, I've showed you this before I have done this section here so I've just done that corner there and I've been I put it down for about a week and then just this week I picked it up again and thought right I'm gonna have a little go at this again because I've been spending a lot of time on the holiday hooties one so um, I thought I would I finished a page which really excited me when once I finished the page I posted pictures on Instagram I got really excited about it and then I put it down for a while because I thought I've been spending so much attention um, to this focusing so much attention on this project trying to get the page finished when I got really close to it so um, I put it down for a week and now I thought okay it's now I can I can have another go because once you get once I get started on doing this I have been really engrossed in it and I just the hours just seem to just disappear <laughs> there's not enough hours in the day to work on this so what I found um, over the last few weeks since I recorded my last video is that the um, parking method was okay for a while but then it just got really messy and the threads hanging down just kept confusing me and I felt like I had threads in the wrong place even though I used the, the chart and I marked off on the chart where I would parked my threads because I don't have um, Pattern Keeper or what, whatever app they people use to see their charts digitally I don't have that so I'm working off of a printed chart and um, so parking threads was a little bit of a nuisance because then I had lots of threads parked because in the top section here there was so many different colours it was just confetti heavy and um, it was just really a nightmare but once I got down to this bit I started to really get my groove on so this is where I'm at so the blue bit here was a real joy to stitch because that was like plain sailing just follow the pattern and just there was clumps of different blue colours and the brown bit here so I really enjoyed these bits because I felt like I was just whizzing along and then the last week I've been doing this in the last what well, I think two days in the last two days I've done this section here and what I've done I started in the middle and I worked outwards so with one colour I did whatever colour was around there and then I've migrated outwards and done one colour and I've gone out and done one colour and that's the way I'm working it so this section now is heading into the blue so this bit will be blue all around here so that will be um, I reckon that will move along quite fast when I've got the blue bits to do to do because there's big chunks of blue and um, yeah I'll be able to I'm looking forward to being able to, being able to see the top of um, Big Ben here because that's what that is that's Big Ben that's the gherkin and um, once I get that I'm going to be excited to get the page finished I'm not looking forward to doing the confetti bit up here with all the different colour threads again from the leaves but um, I am looking forward to doing the big blocks of colour and being able to see the picture just kind of grow so that's quite exciting so this project is being this is the heaven and earth designs project um, in the colour in, not in the colour it's a heaven and earth designs project and it is a story keep and it's called Life is an Open Book and it's by Amy Stewart and um, the fabric is 25 count easy guide fabric and I am stitching this one over one um, somebody I think a lot of people tend to do 
in the stitching or floss tube community they tend to work these 25 count projects one over one because the two when if you're trying to do two over two I'm told it can get a bit bulky and, and difficult to get your needle through so I was advised to try it one over one which is what I'm doing and the coverage is really good I think you can't see the fabric through it so it's really good um, and I'm really pleased with the fact that it actually is starting to look like a photo or a picture so yeah I'm really excited with this one and I'm enjoying every minute of it apart from the confetti bits <laughs> But I am enjoying this. So this is where I've got to on the um, story keep. That's my, that'll probably be my thumb thumbnail. <laughs> so yeah, so those are my cross stitch projects. I think that is it. That is everything um, from my whips and my finished objects to share with you. Now I just have left some incoming, which isn't a lot. So that should be quite quick. So let's get into the incoming. So as I mentioned earlier, I have some, I have been buying some sock yarn. So I picked up the West Yorkshire Spinners yarn in the colour Silent Night, which is the Christmas um, yarn for this year. And I love it. It is so sparkly. It's a blue faced Leicester yarn um, with nylon and obviously polyester for the sparkly bits. And it is, it works up so nicely as you saw from, you would have seen from the socks. I also picked up I seem to be in the mood for, for dark colours because I want to make some socks for the men in my life for Christmas and um, so I picked up some Zalba Ball Crazy which I have used, Zalba, I've used this kind of yarn before but not this colourway necessarily I don't think and this is in the colourway boot and it's a kind of a turquoise blue yarn, it's like a barber pole kind of yarn but I really like um, I like the Zalba Ball Crazy. I have some red ones. I think it was called Charisma, the colourway that I used last time. And those worked up really nicely. If I can, I'll put a picture up of those socks so you can see what I mean. So these should turn out really nice. Nice, strong, sturdy socks. And then I bought some Drops Delight print yarn in the colourway. Well, Dialot 89. I think this is turquoise blue. I think that's what it's called. But this is what it looks like. For some reason, when these arrived... I was surprised that they were pretty similar in colour to these. Um, I don't know why, because I would have, I should have seen from the website. I bought these from Wool Warehouse. I should have seen from the website that they were going to be very similar in colour. But this type of yarn is like a, it's kind of like a single ply yarn. I don't know if you can see that. So it's a different. Can you see it? Yeah, it's different, but I do have some socks in Drops Delight and they work up really nicely. Um, so, and they've lasted quite long. So those should make some lovely socks. So bearing in mind the men in my life are um, a 72 stitch sock. I had to buy two skeins of yarn um, and that should make one pair of socks because they like their, the leg of their socks quite long. So that's those. So that's the yarn I've been buying. Um, you saw the style craft yarn that I bought for the crochet project. I picked up a couple of patterns. So the first one is a knitted baby jacket pattern. Somebody mentioned this on Facebook and the pattern designer is on Etsy. I can't remember the name of the person. Does it? It's not even on the pattern. I'm going to have to find that information and put it on the pattern, but I couldn't resist this. I saw it on somebody's Facebook page. They showed that they made a cardigan using this pattern and I couldn't resist it and that's how cute it is um, so I thought I'd pick up the pattern and give it a go because as I said I have babies joining the family so um, that will be really cute for one of those I also noticed that Heaven and Earth Designs had a pattern sale and so I picked up another pattern I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to doing this one since I've only just started my first Heaven and Earth Designs pattern, but I thought I'd buy it anyway. This is um, artwork by Amy Stewart, and it's another story keep, and it's called Tiki Beach Sunset, and I really liked that look. I thought that would look really nice on the wall, um, in a frame, um, kind of bring me to holiday mode. So, yeah, that's the, that's the new pattern I bought. And lastly, I picked up another cross-stitch kit by Bothy Threads and this is one I've been looking at for a while and it's 
the London one, Bothy Threads London. It's a full coverage, well, with the exception, I'm not sure if this is stitched actually. I think it is full coverage, completely. It says the kit uses full cross stitches, back stitch and a few knots. It doesn't say that it's completely full coverage, but I think it is. Those are the colours, look at that. I'm just, I'm kind of itching to start this one. But I'm trying to get things finished before I move on to starting another project. But yeah, this is on um, 16 count um, Ada, so it'll be a little bit finer, and it'll be my first full coverage kit that I purchased. So we shall see how I get on with this. I may start this. You know what I'm like. I say I'm not going to start something, and then I go off and start it, even though I've got other things on the go. So we shall see. But yeah, this is by Bothy Threads and it's a full coverage kit and it's London and I just don't know what I'll do with it when it's finished but I just want to stitch it I just I'm just driven to stitch it so I picked that up and that's where I'm at that is all of the stuff that I have been buying and working on finished and um, yeah that's it so all that's left to say is I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've been working on. Let me know what you've been working on in the comment section below the video. I have one more thing to do. Last video I said that I would do a giveaway, an impromptu giveaway for this little ladybird by Denkai Designs. And I have my iPad handy to do the giveaway. Let me see if this works because my battery is really <laughs> low for my camera just bear with me so I've put the details in random comment picker and the word that you were to use were was ladybird so that it would pick up your comments and it has picked up it's doing it there we go Karen Crow so Karen if you're still interested in that little ladybird um, needle keeper Karen Crow let's put that there you have won that little impromptu video um, impromptu giveaway even for the ladybird needle keeper so contact me um, you can email me I'll leave my email in the description box below the video and you can hit me up there and I will get that little needle keeper off to you so that's it <laughs> thanks for watching everyone hope you've enjoyed this video if you have give me some thumbs up let me know in the comment section below the video um, if you like to see more videos from me don't forget to subscribe it won't cost you a thing just click on the little subscribe button below the video and also if you want to see when I update um, when I post a new video if you click on the notifications bell next to the subscribe button usually then and click all you will be notified every time I upload a new video and it won't bombard your inbox because I only do one video a month so um, you, you're not going to get like millions of videos <laughs> popping up from me because I don't do loads and loads so yeah that is it thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed and I will see you all next time bye for now <laughs>